I'm about to embarrass uh, South London's pride and joy, FA Obada. Shut up, Jack. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I was slipping on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I didn't even want to pick your brain because right now I'm, okay, in, okay, I'm, in, I'm, in a, I'm in a situation where, okay, I've had my first experience with free agency. Okay, yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then now I'm gonna have my second, and yeah, yeah. you know, the first one I, I learned so much. You know, yeah. like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, coaches yeah. promising the world to me. Of course, of, um, course, of course. You know, and then trying to make the best decision for myself and my family. It, it, yeah. In my opinion, I feel like it worked out. But then going into the second, because you've been, in a, you know, you've experienced it so many times. Yeah. Like, what do you think should be my priorities? What, what questions should I be asking these coaches now? Going into, a free, going into free agency, it doesn't matter what happens, uh, how much you get signed for, you're always going to feel like you got robbed. <laughs> you're always going to feel like you got robbed right. and that you didn't get paid what you think that you're worth. Right. But the truth is, you're only as valuable as the market dictates. You know, how much was somebody's willing to pay for you? And I think that that experience is valuable. Like you said, you're older now. You're an experienced vet. Mm. Before... You know, you had a couple of years under your belt, but you weren't a vet, you know what I mean? And so now you have younger players coming in trying to take your job, but what's the right question or the, or the situation to get into? There's, there, there's literally no indication. There's no indicator. Like anybody can speculate. Your agent might tell you, oh, this team plays a 4-3 mm -hmm. or this team's going to rush you from the outside. That's what you like and right. this and that. You know as well as anybody, you can get moved on game day. Your position can get changed on game day. If a coach doesn't, know who you are they might ask something of you that you know isn't your particularly your strength or that you're not exactly comfortable doing which can also work out well so there's no real planning like there's mm. you can't outsmart these guys you know for you and your position bro honestly at this point in your career i'm gonna tell you take the most money take the biggest offer should i think about now at this stage where i'm at should i should i approach it as a you know, trying to get as many years as I can or a one year or like, you know, how, how do I, how do I, I approach mean, that? You so know. Say, say I'm not happy with what they're giving me. You know, you have your internal value and then also you have the value that someone's willing to pay for you. Of course. So then you, it's like, okay, now every season is you're trying to set yourself up for the next contract or of the course. next opportunity. Exactly. So it's like, okay, do you, do you, what should be my priority then? Should I yeah. try and get that up front? Should I bet on myself? Should I do the one year? Like, you know, I'm really I, would, trying, yeah. I would I would go into it with the mindset as though this is your last year. Okay. okay. Take whatever's the most upfront money you're gonna get. And if you go off, you will be compensated on it eventually. Okay. If you go into next year, if you sign a two-year deal mm -hmm. and it's for two million. Right. And you get God, 10 God, sacks. God, God forbid. God you get 10 sacks. <laughs> God forbid. It's, 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 yeah. God forbid. You can say it in LA. Um, in, uh, but you get 10 sacks yeah. in your first year. Yeah. And now your next year is only scheduled for a million. That 10 sacks will still secure you a job in the future. The gamble that you're making is that, you know, you might have a great year. And if you have another free agency, you can get big payday. That's a, it's a, that's a tough, tough call to make, man. And... You know, I don't, I'm, I never look at things from a pessimistic angle, but I always look at the moment and how much money can I secure for myself and my family in the moment. And, um, you know, you, you know as well as anybody, it's, it's not for long. It's not for long. NFL is not a, <laughs> it's not a league where you're, you know, you've got a lot of opportunity. The problem is, is that you, you start to build up a little bit of money. You've got a little bit of confidence in your rush. Yeah. Don't let that get to your head. Okay. Just keep yourself as, as humble as possible and stay away from any sort of fun. You're gonna you're gonna save your money mm. and you're gonna you know you're gonna spend wisely. You're not gonna blow your money. You're gonna you're gonna be conservative with your money. When you have kids, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta edit that out. <laughs> but yeah, he got yeah, he treat himself that one.
But where, where are you though? Where are you in your in your journey? Ten years in the books. Congrats. Uh, Congrats. Thanks, That's man. a blessing. Thanks. Honestly, people you don't know, see it's, that. It's a roller coaster, man. Ten years in the books. Um, you know, it's it's tough. Like I'm at a point where I don't think that money is going to change for me, but I think that the opportunity to play in a Super Bowl or to win a ring or to just make that big play yeah, is, is something that, you know, you're not going to get back, man. Yeah, we was this close. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, as he was. We was, it's, we was it's, I was just hoping that you guys just made it, man. It's bro, so tough when you get to the playoffs. Bro, we was 13 seconds away from, from you know what I mean? But yeah, man, no, you guys were close, man. I, I'm sure you know, like, the, the intensity of that oh, is crazy, isn't it? It was, it was, it was electric, it's man. I, I just still feel that game. And that's the stuff that you just can't buy, bro. Yeah. You can't buy that stuff, man. It's weird, but, you know, a lot of athletes, you know, like, they talk about money all the time, bro. They talk about making their money. I'm protecting my, you know, my paycheck, my family. But once you've made a certain amount, bro, you want to win something, bro. That's true. You know what I mean? That like, it's true. depressing that I've never been to a, to a Super Bowl in 10 years, and I've been thinking about surviving. But when I look back, it's like, man, I wish I could play on that stage you know, and, and have a chance to make a big play in the Super Bowl, but they're not like it, bro. Like, you never can get that back. Everybody's watching, Can't get right? that back, bro. Everybody's watching, and it's just, it's what you've been working for this whole time. Yeah, that's true. That's the problem. Like, people don't realize that a defensive lineman, the ultimate thing you can do is a sack. That's the ultimate stat you can get, a sack, fumble, whatever, you know? We work seven days a week. Oh, my God. 24, we work 24-7 right. to, get to, the, to get to the quarterback. And you might only get three, four, if you're lucky, Thank sacks you. a year. What? If you get five, six sacks a year, you had a good year. That's why, they, that's why it's valued. That's why they get, you get paid for that. That's why you get paid, bro. And that's why it's such ups and downs, bro. Like the 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 psyche of a, of a football player and a defensive lineman is so high. Your highs are so high and your lows are so low. I want I need to work on my celebration. Come with you. I need to work on my celebration. I need to I need to create like a no, really good I know. iconic celebration. Bro, that's the thing, bro. I, like by the time I figured out my celebration, man, there's no sack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever like experience like imposter syndrome? <sighs> You know, like uh, even like like you, you, you shouldn't be here. Yeah, because um, that's something I definitely struggle with. I think that's a strength, man. I think that's a strength. Like, like I think that it's, I don't, you know, the imposter syndrome is like a, it's a funny like concept because people often use it as though somewhere they don't belong. But the you know, I felt like the idea that I didn't belong made me work that much harder. Okay. You know, I never looked at it as though. You know, like it gives you a sense of never being comfortable. And in this in this world, man, everybody wants stability. Everybody wants to be comfortable. And sometimes that's the biggest thing holding people back. When I came to the States, whatever I was doing, I came over for basketball, but then I transitioned. But even in football, I always felt that sense of like, I never wanted to end up back in London before it was on my own terms. Mm. Because then I would have felt like a failure. failure. Yeah. Okay, you know, right. I always felt that like, not that I think people cared or that anybody was kind of Watching looking it. at me that way. But yeah. deep down, I felt that if I had come back to London or not getting a job or whatever, I always felt like that, that, that motivation of being a failure was kind of behind it. You are who you are, bro. Some things about you are not going to change. And what some things about you, nobody in the NFL or anybody here wants you to change. When they look at you on tape, that's exactly what they want. It's just about not losing that. Mm. And the only thing that's going to make you lose that is really complacency, bro. It's being somebody you're not. And mm. so stick with who you are, man, and just stay true to yourself. We all, like, people who follow you, bro, like, we know your skill set, man. You've got a unique ability to get to the quarterback that people are not born with very often. Everybody sees that. Everybody sees that. And now it's just about trying to get every penny you can for that, bro. For that, every bro. penny you can. No, really. And then you can go back to the ends. <laughs> just, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to go back to the nah, ends. Nah, nah. <laughs> you might stay out here now. <laughs> <laughs> might do what I tell them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Move out here. Yeah. <laughs> 
So what is it with people when they get money and they get rich that you, regardless of where they come from and their background and their upbringing, yeah. they somehow find their way into golf? <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, I'm just figuring that one out myself, man. I, I think that there's some kind of secret behind golf that I haven't figured out yet because every person who gets 10 sacks somehow gets starts go golf. Go yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah. You you wasn't you wasn't playing know. golf. Like, you was... a pay, like once you've made a certain amount in your savings account, yeah. the next thing is you go to like a driving range or you go pick up the golf clubs and something like that. Have, uh, have you reached that golf club stage? Bro, I've been wanting to get into it, man. <laughs> Honestly, I tell you what, there's a couple things. There's a couple there's a couple excuses behind that. One is that a lot of players especially retired, who have built up their, their, their net worth uh -huh. and they've got, they've got enough money to kind of chill, they get bored, bro. Okay. they got nothing to take up their time. Golf is low impact and it's competitive <laughs> and you can play it for the rest of your life. Right. The second reason that falls into that is that only rich people play golf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's how they network. So, yeah, man, it definitely is a little secret society that I'm... I'm, yeah, I'm you know, like, I gotta up my golf game yeah, and get, be a part of it now. <laughs> like, especially you, bro. You know, you no, got I'm, ways I'm, to go. I'm not gonna... <laughs> you got way too much muscle, bro. Yeah, Your muscle ups. You done way too many muscle ups <laughs> to be swinging golf clubs, bro. You're gonna have to chill for a good year. No, just, just lean atrophy. out. <laughs> just atrophy. Let like your muscle just turn to fat, and just then you'll be able to swing. What would you say is your biggest takeaways? Like, what what do you think you've you've learned from this period in which you've been in the league. I think what's obviously I'm just gi just given this opportunity, you know, like it, it and where I came from, yeah. that fear. Well, <laughs> I'm, you know, what I mean? yeah, that, yeah, it's fear. It's fear. It's, it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it is fear. That fear of going back to yeah, yeah, a poverty, to yeah. nothing, to being nobody, to being irrelevant, to feeling yeah. like you don't matter and you don't exist, and yeah. that that's yeah. what. That's that was my feel, you yeah. know. And then, just even when I was on practice squad, bro, I was making like three G's a week. Yeah. And I had to give like two months of my life at my workplace just to get that money. Yeah. You know, and I'm yeah, getting yeah. that in a week, and and that yeah, was at yeah, the yeah. lowest stage of what the NFL was offering. Yes. You know, and yeah. then so that was that was, alone was fuel to say, you know what, I'm gonna give this thing my yeah. everything, my life, my. Yeah my existence you know and yeah. and i did that and but yeah. you know as we're getting older and as you're getting through it, and as you're saying like you're going through the different stages it's like close. year one it was making the team or yeah. you know just learning the game year two it was making a team then it was practice squad and yeah. practice squad making yeah. the team then it was active and active trying to yeah. be impactful and get sacks and be productive and then being yeah. productive now it's trying to you know see if i can do it consistently or even do it in, in, on d different teams right. So right. the goals just kept kept moving and kept yeah. moving. And now I'm at a point where, okay, I, now I want to secure my family. I want to change yeah. the narrative of my yes. family. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously after that, then maybe I could I would start caring about yeah. the Super Bowl and stuff like that. It's refreshing to kind of have a conversation, even though we're friends. Yeah. And I can call you anytime. Right. But to have a conversation like this with somebody who's gone through a transition as I have, where you left your country and you left with no friends. You left them behind all your friends, mm -hmm. any family you had, and and you know everything that you were comfortable in in London, you left behind and you came over. And in my experience, making that transition, it really, it really kind of helped me narrow narrow in and focus and kind of you know, dismiss all the distractions I had right. before. I and that, that was... There's still distractions what? out here. There's still there's <laughs> a lot of distractions. Oh there's a lot of distractions. But you know what? When you what? first were here, there were oh, none. There wasn't. There, there wasn't. There was no, none, no distractions. That's and right. I remember your schedule. So <laughs> I know you were coming to work and going home. And you had no distractions. So, yeah, I, you know, to me, it's uh, it's one of the things that I think moving forward is going to be... It's going to keep this 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 pipeline of, of international players growing. and. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's something that it's gonna, it's it's always a strength, man. When you you leave your your comfort zone That's and right. you just go to a place where you can focus completely on one thing, it's um, the amount you can improve is is it's it's, crazy. It's right? insane, yeah. yeah. It's insane, man. You've definitely been a huge help in, in my career. Like I, I remember I, I phoned you and, and kind yeah. of pulling that wealth of knowledge that you have and experience. And, and no, for real, I, I appreciate it. Of course, I bro, do. Of course, I do. and it's all love and. Uh, 
I see some of the traits that I had in you because your it was your your hard work that got you the opportunity to get to the quarterback. So yeah, man, it's 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 exciting, bro. I'm excited to kind of live through you. You know, I think that you know you're gonna set an example for a lot of players. But to be honest, you, you did it. You did it yourself, man. It was amazing catching up with you, bro, man. Yes, bro. Awesome.